Okay guys, I'm going to tie you a wee shrimp pattern. This is one of my own flies. Um, the hook in the vise is a size 10 Partridge Patriot double. The thread that we're going to use to tie the fly is uni thread 80 in red. Now, we're just going to come in, get our thread started a couple of mil behind the eye of the hook because we've lots of materials going on up here. And we'll just run on a few turns of thread and remove the waist tag. Now, the, the tag and the rib on the fly is going to be the ultra wire and hot yellow. So, I'm just going to take a length of this off, try not to drop it. And we'll just tie this in underneath the hook. A couple of turns, nice tight turns to keep your thread tight, and you can bring the wire underneath the hook. And then we're just going to run the thread down, tying this in. Now I'm just going to bring the thread down and once I let the bobbin go, I'm in line with the point of the hook. And then I'm going to come round with six turns or so of the wire and on the last turn bring it up and in between the two hooks. That just creates a nice wee hot tag at the back of the fly also prevents the materials from slipping off the hook when the fish take it and the fish do take this fly it's a good fly to have in your box okay. so I'm going to run that up fold the wire back and then bring the thread back down tying in the wire again this will be a rib put that into the material clip now First part of the tail, red bucktail. It's just a wee small pinch of red bucktail. Right. You can have your tail as long or short as you like, it's up to you. I'm going to have mine twice the length of the hook over the back. I'm going to come around with a pinch and loop and a couple of tight turns to secure in the tail. And then we'll come in and trim off the excess with a bit of a tapered cut and uh, in that we're going to add in two strands of red crystal flesh up into the tail room with a turn to hold another turn to secure fold it back a couple of turns over and then trim it away right and just moist now because we need that for the wing now, in the tail also we're going to put in some golden pheasant tippet dyed red so just take that away just take away the rubbish we don't need from the bottom then all I do is just come in get the feather pull it into the tips come in with my scissors and just remove a, a bunch of the fiber now you want a good bunch I'm going to have this the length of the body over the back of the fly and with a couple of turns or a couple of turns of the hold come in just put a wee bit of a taper cut in the cut ends of the golden pheasant tippet and then just take your time and run your thread up tying these materials in now you want your body to be as smooth as possible it's going to be an oval mirage tinsel for the body now if you've noticed what I've done is I've always brought my tying thread forward. Don't sit and tie on the one spot because you'll just create lumps and bumps in the fly and the back of the fly will just be, it won't look right. So at this stage, keep bring come in and hold your tail and bring your thread back down. Now you're going to start to come over your tail here, filling up that gap that you missed where you've came forward with the fly. That's it all leveled out now. Body, like I say, open mirage tinsel. The wee length on my desk here from the last fly. That's it there. It's the spool. Start for this up to the hook. I'm just gonna tie it in the length of the body. Now I want my thread turns touching here. Coming up because I want the red to show through on the open mirage tinsel. And then we can bring up our Opal Mirage now. 
just want to get one nice clean tight turn under the under the tail. Just nice and neat. And then one turn slightly overlapping the other coming up the body. Now you can put super glue on there if you wish. Or varnish, it's up to you. Make a fly last a wee bit longer. Come in, trim away the excess. Then we can bring up our rib. And you're looking four turns of the hot yellow wire onto the body, to there. Fly it across with your thread, get one turn in to hold, a couple of turns to secure, then bend and break away the wire. Right, we'll just get a bit of thread down here at the front. Lock it on up here. So we'll the wing. So I'm going to put in a, a wing of grey squirrel tail dyed red and then an under wing or a throat if you like. So just come in. Just take a pinch of the squirrel tail. Just enough to create a wing. So we have the trim this away. Now I'm going to stack this. first into the hair stagger. Give us a rattle. All the tips have lined up. Take it out. Measure up to the hook. You can have the wing as long as you like. I'm just going to have it coming back to the tips of the golden pheasant. Tip it feather. I'm going to come around with a pinching loop. A couple of tight turns just to secure this in. I usually measure it and trim, but I have enough space at the front to be able to do this. So I'm going to come in and just trim away the cut ends. Now, the squirrel has a tendency to pull out. So I'm going to wipe a wee bit of super glue onto the thread. And I'm going to take this down over the cut ends of the squirrel. This will secure it in nice and tight. Back up again. I'll put two strands of the red crystal flesh into the wing. Just down each side. Pinch and loop. A couple of turns. Fold the excess back over. Come in. Trim that away. Bring our thread back up to the wing. Now I'm just going to come in and clip these to the length of the wing. Now we need to get another bunch of our squirrel tail dyed, grey squirrel dyed red. Oh. For the underwing, or the, the throat, sorry. It's going to be the same length as the wing. So I'm just going to come in, knock this into the horse dagger, tips first. Give us a rattle on the desk. All the tips have lined up. do here is I'm just going to spin the vise round. We've got a vise that can do this here. It's half of the bottle. Right, I just want this to be the same length as the wing. Just come in and pinch it come in with a pinching loop. Then another. A couple of tight turns here now. Just to secure this in the place. I'm going to trim this too. I'm going to come in and just trim away the cut ends. I'm going to put on another wee, like a super glue, under the thread and bring it down over these cut ends. It's best to do this or else varnish. It just it secures the squirrel her in because it does have a tendency to, to put out on you. Okay. Bring this back around into focus for you, if you can see what I'm doing. Right, the haggle. It's just going to be a bodger. It's just a cheap bodger haggle. It's been dyed red. Right. I want to get a good file right here. Something nice. There's one more. That one broke on me, so we'll go back on to the cape again.
get another one. From there. Yeah, I'm not going to take all the fluff away. I'm going to leave this here as a bit of a handle for me to wind. Now I'm going to come in and just stroke back the, the favours to reveal the tip. I'll throw this up to the hook. Come around with a turn to hold, another turn to secure, fold back the tip. Bring the thread back up over the tip. Tying in the hackle, come in, trim, take away the tip. Then we're going to come in and just stroke these fibers back with our scissors. This will get it started for us. Just by jam hooks, that stems really thin. And then we're just going to take one turn in front of the other. Now, I'm going to use the majority of this wee hackle up because the, the fibers on it are fine. One turn in front of the other. Right. That's plenty. So I'm just going to come around with the thread turn nice and tight. And the other, I'm going to strip off the remaining fibers that's on the stem. I'm going to fold it back. Just don't want to create bulk at the head. Because I'm going to put jungle cock on. So just fold this back. Bring the thread turns back up over the stem keeping your thread tight you can break away the stem all right just come in and see how we're sitting at this stage now i'm happy enough that now i have two jungle cock eyes here on my desk already ready so we'll just get these lined up on the hand now you're just seeing the undersides all I want to do is just come in, take back the fibers, not stripping them off, and just pulling them back. Offer it up to the hook. Just come around with a couple of turns to hold, just loose turns to get these in the position. Right, I'm going to take another one up. Right, just want to make sure that they're the same. Length. This one's just a wee bit longer. So I'm just going to pull it in. Just want to check just to make sure because once these are secured in, that's it. Now, happy enough for that. So I'm just going to go to two jungle cock eyes, tighten up all my turns coming up the way, just to secure them in, and then bring my thread turn back down to the eye. I'm going to fold back the, the stems of the jungle cock. Just get everything back. Just one wee fibre there. And then just bring your thread turns up over the stem. Now, keeping your thread turns tight, you can come in and break away the stems. And then we're just going to come in and whip finish because we're going to brighten the head up with some glow bright floss. Three term whip finish is plenty. Trim it away. And the glow braid floss we're going to use is glow braid floss number four. So I'm going to come in, get the floss started, just build it up over your head. Trim the access of the floss away. Want a nice bright head on this fly. So just build your head up a wee bit. Keep the floss tight. Come in and throw in a whip finish way back down. Pull the floss tight and come in, trim away the excess. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to come in the first coat super glue. Straight round the head, right the whole way right round, and then once that's dry. I'll come in and put on a couple of coats of varnish now. A wee fly. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a lot to it. So there is, but honestly, that fly catches fish. Now, I've done well on that fly on the River Derg. The own clue. 
I've been sitting tying up a few of them tonight. I think you can see them ones. There's another one there. And that's another one. So I've been sitting tying, usually tying up about three or four in tens, and then three or four twelves, and then down into the fourteens. And the smaller you go on the size, you just reduce your material. But look, tie a few up, and genuinely, it'll catch you a couple of fish.